Ooh, the attendees are going up. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. And thank you for tuning in to our Affordable Housing and Homeless Candidates Forum for the 54th Assembly District. The Southern California Co Association of Nonprofit Housing in collaboration with key stakeholders is proud with, to have bring to, the, bring to you those who are seeking elected office in relation to the issues that rank at the top of the voters' priority lists in Los Angeles County and across the state. Let me tell you why we believe this is a good topic. A survey was conducted between March 24th and March 31st and released by EMC Research that was commissioned by a group, Bring California Home. It polled more than 1,000 likely voters in 2022, in November. More than 80% of the likely voters expressed concern about people experiencing homelessness, as well as low income and disadvantaged families finding a place to live, according to the statement. Now our 54th AD is fortunate to have elected officials who are servant leaders. And let me just share the overlay because this is a minute of education. We have our US senators, Diane Feinstein and Alex Padilla. We have our Congresswoman, Karen Bass. Our Senator said Sydney Kamlaka Dove. Yes, she's Senator now. You know, you voted for her for assembly. She is Senator now. And that's why we really have a special election on May 18th. Supervisor Holly Mitchell, Mayor Eric Garcetti, and Council Member Mark Ridley Thomas. And Council Member Mark Ridley Thomas sums up their general agreed upon concern as they support AB 71. He said, the latest polling proves that we are on the right tracks to end homelessness. More than 60% of surveyors agree that just as they have the right to vote and a right to education, all Californians should have a right to housing. The onus must be on government to prevent our most vulnerable residents from falling into homelessness. We must do this with urgency. And so tonight we are so grateful to the sponsoring organizations and let me list them for you so you can join me in thanking them. The Southern California Association of Nonprofit Housing, LA Voice, Venice Community Housing, KFA Architecture, Sutro Avenue Block Club of Southeast Lamert Park, Social Justice Learning Institute, Culver City for More Homes, Westside Urban Forum, the Coalition of Small Property Owners, and the Empowerment Congress of West Area Neighborhood Development Council. Our greatest thanks is to the candidates who are anxious to converse with you and we're anxious to converse with them. In alphabetical order, thank you, Isaac Bryan, Dallas Fowler, Heather Hutt, Samuel Robert Morales, and Cheryl Turner. Uh, let me share that this evening, uh, Mr. Bernard Center has had to decline after making a commitment because of an emergency, we will keep him in prayer. Let me explain the format so we can get started. We will have opening statements, candidates, one minute each. That will be followed by four questions with a potential bonus question that will likely be a yes or no. And then finally, a closing statement. You will have 90 minutes, 90 seconds, not minutes, 90 seconds to respond to each of the questions except question number one. And for that question, you will have one minute. Do I need to repeat that instruction? Everyone's smiling, we have a great group. So now let me call upon you for the opening statement. And I will call upon you in alphabetical order for this one and thereafter it will be the moderator's choice. So let me start with Isaac Bryan. Thank you, Ms. Jackie, and, and thank you everybody for being here. 138 people, that's what I like to see at a forum. It's, it's a really important time for this district. It's a really important time for our state. My name is Isaac Bryan and I am running for this seat. And I'm running for a mixture of personal and professional reasons. I've seen our systems fail a lot of folks. Uh, I myself am one of nine adopted children and a family that, had, that did foster care for 26 years and had hundreds of foster children come to the house. 
As a result, I went to 11 learning institutions, including two public universities, three high schools, two community colleges, a middle school, and a handful of elementary schools. And by the time I made it to UCLA for my master's in public policy, I realized I was the only one of my adopted brothers and sisters who made it to college. Many didn't make it out of high school. In fact, right now, all of my siblings left in California, either unhoused or incarcerated. And these issues are real life for a lot of us. And they're, they're more than academic studies and they are certainly more than issues of discussion. They impact our very core. And when I left UCLA, I graduated top of my class and I, I'll never forget the feeling being top of the stage, being awarded student of the year, knowing that the rent was due that same day and I didn't have it. Oh. If it wasn't for a mentor of mine who cut me a personal check to keep a roof over my head, I would have been more than housing insecure. And that's graduating with a graduate degree from the number one public university. And I know how many more are falling through the cracks. I went to go work on homelessness policy for Mayor Eric Garcetti and reentry policy. At the same time, my older brother slept in Pershing Square. I got frustrated because I realized the limitations of the city's approach. Even though I helped set up the homeless, Unified Homeless Response Center and, and started thinking through some of our temporary housing structures, I realized we needed multi-level collaboration. We needed more resources. I left to help organize in my community, build up community capacity. I went back to the university to build up a think tank, the Ralph J. Bunch Center and the UCLA Black Policy Project, which I founded with resources from the state government. We used that research to move policy at the city, the state, uh, and the county level. Inspired some federal policy too. And over that course of that time, I also became a senior advisor to then assembly member, Sidney Kamlager. We worked on housing policy, education Mr. policy. Brian, I policy. think you had one minute. And that's my minute, I will tell you more in a second. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I have just been advised that the uh, stop clock is not working. Uh, so I'm now going to multitask and try to keep time. Uh, so uh, let me just say, um, I'll just say simply time uh, at, and that will give you an opportunity to wrap up. Thank you for your cooperation. Ms. Dallas Fowler, is she back? Okay, she did have an interview. So let me go to Ms. Heather Hutt. Thank you, Jackie DuPont Walker, and thank you everyone who joined us today. You could be anywhere else, and I really appreciate you wanting to get to know about our policies and um, the choice that you'll make for the assembly member for the 54th district. I'm Heather Hutt. I'm a mother of uh, three sons. I am um, a single mom. I have myself had housing insecurities as I left a rough uh, relationship with three little boys, $35 and one credit card. I lived in a motel until I could get the courage to talk to my family about really where I was in life and that I was what would be considered unhoused. Um, my experience has been vast. I uh, have owned my own business and I have worked in the California State Assembly. I've worked in the California State Senate District Director in both. Most recently, I served as the State Director and Senior Advisor for U.S. Senator Kamala. Wow, thank you. <laughs> uh, let, let me stop and ask my team, is there someone else who can keep help me keep the time? Yes, Olivia on the SCAMP team will help keep time. Okay, and so if you'll just simply say time, I can concentrate on our guests. Okay. Thank you, okay. Uh, did Was I fair to Ms. Hutt? Yes, that was a minute. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Morales. A minute goes by very quickly. So hello everyone, my name is Samuel Morales. I am a California native, uh, third generation on my father's side, second generation on my mother's side. Uh, my father was in the United States Army. He was a military policeman. My mother, a waitress her whole career. She was her the union steward. So I come from a union household and uh, grew up in uh, Monterey County. Went to Seaside High School, found myself with nearly a full ride to Vassar College changed the trajectory of my life, as you can imagine. Uh, so I am a huge proponent of education. Um, I got my certificate in college counseling from UCLA. So education is huge for me. I can't stress enough how 
finding myself at a, at a private institution such as Vassar really set me on a different trajectory than from where I came from. I'm the first person in my family to go to college. So uh, my minute is almost up. I'm into uh, affordable and low income housing. I think healthcare is a human right. Hi. And as I said, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Morales. Um, Ms. Turner, Ms. Yes. Cheryl Turner. Good evening. Thank you for inviting us to this event. My name is Cheryl Turner. I'm running to be your next state assembly member. I grew up in the district. I attended Westchester High School. I was accepted to USC where I studied international relations and graduated with a law degree. I opened my own law practice where I specialized in consumer rights, civil rights, and business, real estate, and tax but I did provide services to many in, of the underserved. Um, I, I did some research and I found that real estate was something that I wanted to invest my future retirement in. And so I got involved in multifamily housing. And today I am elected as the president of the board of directors of the Apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles. I have also had an opportunity to serve on the executive board of a nonprofit group that's involved in providing senior affordable housing. I was also appointed as state commissioner uh, involved in overseeing health care throughout the state of California. And uh, I enjoy that. Hi. Okay, so thank, thank you, Ms. Turner. Uh, is Ms. Dallas Fowler back? Okay, she's not returned. Uh, and, and thank you for being so nimble. You're smiling as we are cutting you Hi. off. So sorry. Here you are. Uh, one minute opening statement, please. Greetings. Greetings. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry. We have as Pause candidates. And then we'll wrap up the we have as candidates um, in a special election, uh, multiple interviews happening at the same time. And I got crunched in on this one. And I apologize to you all. I really want to give you my full focus. I'm Dallas Fowler. I'm the candidate for the 54th Assembly District. Uh, my background includes uh, construction, financial services, as well as arts and entertainment media. I have served on boards and commissions in the city of Los Angeles since 2006. I have been a longtime fighter for um, equality, healthcare for all, um, public education, and I hope to have your vote in this race. Um, Listen, I have a very rare set of experiences. Two jobs I never thought I would have taken out of college was for a construction company and a bank, and they ended up being the best decisions in my life. Um, the work that I got to do with our mayor, Eric Garcetti in Los Angeles, combating human trafficking, holding the city's first hackathon and technology conference for women and girls, doing the city's first ever study on the status of women and girls um, was some of the most rewarding experiences of my life, getting young women and men placed in safe houses and away from their captors. Um, I do believe that I have the right set of experiences to meet the challenges that we are facing. I have been working on a number of programs, mm -hmm. but I am a businesswoman. I have small business experience. Oh, is that 60 seconds up? I that look forward to addressing all of that in our questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I failed to introduce myself. I'm Jacqueline DuPont Walker. Some people call me uh, Jackie. You heard someone call me Miss Jackie. I answer to all of those. Uh, my experience in housing is as an affordable housing developer. We're pleased to provide housing for low and very low income families. And so my question to each one of you is, what is your housing background? Let me start with uh, Mr. Morales, Mr. Samuel Morales. So my housing background, well, uh, I own a house in West Adams, bought it in 2009. Before that, when I lived in uh, New York City, uh, had a co-op there. I've uh, owned homes in, uh, not homes, uh, apartments in uh, Brooklyn. And as uh, the homeowner's representative on the West Adams Neighborhood Council, before us, uh, this was years ago, before us came uh, a vote on a housing project you are all probably very familiar with. It is the housing project, it's the, um, it's on Westview and Jefferson. It's, uh, it was co-built co with the Cesar Chavez Foundation, right? So on Westview, just north of Jefferson. I was on the West Adams Neighborhood Council when that came up for a vote and I voted for it. A lot of my colleagues said, oh no, that's too dense. It's too high. Westview, as those of you who know, is a very narrow street. And I was like, okay, so you are going to vote against uh, uh, 
um, senior and veteran housing. You're going on the record. Time is up. So. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. So Heather. Are one minute? Are we getting one minute? Are you getting 90 seconds? Okay, okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. One minute uh, for question number one and 90 seconds for the others. So yes, that was one minute. Ms. Heather Huff, one minute, please. Certainly. Yes, I uh, worked in the state when they were reimagining Jordan Down. So I worked on those projects to help make sure there was local hire, a project labor agreement, and also that minority contractors are the contractors that are building that, as well as the uh, bringing in reentry folks from uh, career expansions to be able to do the work. So what in this case we did was bought gang members that were right there in Jordan Downs and did training so that they could go to work and actually uh, imagine their lives in a different way where they got a paycheck, they actually uh, belong to a union. And we're really proud of what Jordan Downs look like. This is some of the work, but state and uh, federal work bring funding into home um, housing authorities in San Bernardino, in Los Angeles, and in Monterey. So that's just some of the work that I've done in my uh, experience is bringing federal funds into those spaces. Thank you. Um, Okay. Candidates, Sharon, I'm Cheryl Turner. Yes, as I said, I'm president of the Apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles. I've been a member for 20 years. I served on their legal committee as well as their state governmental relations committee traveling back and forth to Sacramento to work on bills that affect housing. Um, I'm a part of FAME Santa Monica Redevelopment Corporation. I'm on their executive board and, and we manage um, approximately 64 senior affordable housing units. I work also with housing providers occasionally when they have legal issues that they must address if the city is involved in inspections and, ish and, re and issues of that nature. And Thank you. I personally manage my own apartment buildings. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Canada Dallas Fowler. Candidate Isaac Bryan. Thank you, Ms. Jackie. Uh, I've probably lived in more different types of housing than anybody else on this call. I've been in apartments, I've been in townhomes, I've been in homes, I've been in duplexes. Uh, and that experience personally has shaped my, my mindset. But while working for Mayor Garcetti, I worked under Deputy Mayor Brenda Shockley and worked hand in hand with Ben Winters in the housing uh, side of that shop, especially at a time when we were looking to reform Section 8 protocols. We know that if you're formally incarcerated, that prevents you many times from uh, living with your family might be using a section eight voucher. And so we had to reform some of those policies at the county level because the county was putting more requirements on it than the federal government was putting it on through HUD. And so we did some work around there. I also was there when we set up the bridge home shelters. That's not affordable housing. And that's part of the reason I got frustrated because temporary structures to me are not the solution. Homes is the solution to our housing crisis and to our homelessness crisis. Uh, I also worked in the, the mayor CENTCOM unit, which really directly tried to make those linkages between street level homelessness and permanent housing. Jordan Downs, of course, was a whole city project, but most recently I worked with Measure J and one of the key I'm, conditions of Measure J was permanent funding for affordable housing. Thank you. Our next question uh, is about uh, legislation in Sacramento. What is your position on land use bills uh, out of Sacramento like Senate Bill 9 and 10 this year or Senate Bill 50 and 1120 in prior years? Uh, let me start with... Um, Ms. Hallahat. Sure. So I I oppose those uh, zoning bills that come from the state. I believe that it should remain in local control. However, uh, the state should step in and certainly when we see discrimination happening. That's when uh, you would look at your state for uh, that kind of leadership. But I believe that they should uh, belong in local control, and I oppose those bills. Uh, thank you. Our next candidate, Isaac Bryan. Yeah, I, th I think the idea, right, the idea that we can build more housing, we need to increase the supply and density is one of those tools of conversation. But the reality is neither SB9 or 10 or its predecessors have the necessary conditions to make sure that that housing is affordable anyway. So going from one home that's unaffordable to three or four on a lot that are also still unaffordable to me is not quite the answer. We're not there yet. Candidate Samuel Morales. The issue that I think, and we're all in pretty much in agreement, is 
if we're going to build duplexes where there are formerly single family houses, that is not getting to uh, alleviate the problem with low income and affordable housing. So it's it's I feel like uh, it's the its heart is in the right place when it comes to SB nine, but it's not going to help uh, our low income uh, people that need housing stock that they can afford. So again, it's 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 in the the heart is in the right place, but it doesn't it doesn't work for for our district. That's for sure. So there's plenty of non affordable housing. The issue is we need more affordable housing and low income housing. So I believe SB hits the mark. Excuse me, SB9 hits the mark. Candace Cheryl Turner. Yes, okay, so with regard to SB50 and 1120, I do support the issue of, or the idea of having multifamily housing next to transit quarters, but I don't believe that they should, would extend into single family uh, residential housing, especially involving HPLZs and, and homes like that. Um, so we should keep them from those areas. As far as uh, nine and 10, uh, yes, uh, ADUs, I mean, I mean, not ADUs, we can have duplexes, but I'm also concerned that they can multiply. You can start with two, but then nothing prevents you from doing two more and two more and two more. And that could be a problem. It does remove control uh, from the local jurisdiction. Um, and it doesn't really address affordable housing unless it's replacing an affordable housing uh, building, which if it's a single family home, it's very unlikely that that's the case. So I'm not sure that it truly does address uh, the needs for developing more affordable housing. Is Canada Dallas Fowler available? Okay, I don't see. So let's move to the next question, our third question. Uh, and Hi. here we, there you are. Okay, question number two, did you hear it? Do I need to repeat it? No, I did not hear the question. Okay, what is your position on land use bills out of Sacramento, like Senate Bill 9 and 10 this year, or Senate bills 50 and 1120 in prior years? Um, I was opposed to SB 50. Um, I think it was a, a detriment and was not uh, in consideration of Los Angeles County or our homes and our housing infrastructure. Um, SB 9 and 10, I am currently in opposition in their current form um, for a variety of reasons, but I don't believe our issue is having low income and affordable housing. Um, that is what we need. And neither one of those bills will bring that. It'll bring a lot more housing, sure, but it will not bring um, actual affordable housing. So I'm in uh, opposition to those bills. Okay, thank you. So how would you secure a permanent source of housing for affordable housing in our assembly district? Uh, let me start with you, Ms. Turner. Well, I would definitely continue to support and fund tax credits, which is part of the way that we can build. I would definitely uh, provide uh, concessions uh, to the development of affordable housing uh, to get investors to buy into and create uh, affordable housing. And we need to look at the uh, constitutional amendment that prohibits the building of public low income housing in areas. Uh, and see how we can work around that so that we can accomplish that. And we need to enforce the regional um, requirement that local jurisdictions make space available to build affordable housing. For those okay, thank you. Uh, Candidate Samuel Morales. If I make it to Sacramento, I would encourage more public private partnerships. I would en encourage tax incentives, and I would encourage a system where the state or the county underwrites loan guarantees for developers who are willing to, to, to go out on a limb and build low income and affordable housing. So mm -hmm. if they have loan guarantees, they know if the development goes south or has cost overruns, uh, they won't be left holding the bag because you know, if a commercial developer isn't making a profit, he's not gonna, he's not gonna be playing ball. So I think that's the that's the number one uh, priority. We can't change the price of land, right? But we can uh, help with the funding, the underwriting, and uh, try our best. I know it's a challenge, but try our best to cut through the red tape and and the zoning that increases the cost of building. So that would be my proposal. Thank you. Candidate Heather Hutt. Thank you. 
You know, 2010, uh, the state got rid of redevelopment agencies. As your assembly member, I would bring back redevelopment agencies. When Maxine Waters was an assembly member, uh, she wrote a bill that says 50% of redevelopment agency funding should be for affordable housing and we would be able to use tax increment financing. I would utilize all of those things. I'm currently working with Congresswoman Waters on um, the, the infrastructure bill because they're seeing housing as a part of the infrastructure bill, which is gonna bring billions of dollars for affordable housing and for low income housing. And that's just exactly what we need is that federal boost in in um, the 54th district. And then if we bought back that tool and made sure nobody was abusing redevelopment agencies, then well, I believe that we would be able to do the financing we need, bring back the affordable housing that we need and uh, give our community just what we're lacking. So redevelopment agencies, that's my answer. And the resources that I can bring in federally. Thank you. Candidate Isaac Bryant. Yeah, we got rid of redevelopment agencies because they were being abused. Um, and there is an increment tax financing structure in place that requires more collaboration uh, currently. But Measure J that we just passed this November, it was critically important to me as one of the co-chairs to make sure that affordable housing was one of the eligible uses that funds were allowed to go for. Measure J is a permanent source of funding, hundreds of million dollars, millions of dollars every year in perpetuity of which affordable housing is an eligible youth use along with youth development alternatives to incarceration and small business support. I think the state needs to look very critically at its budget as well so that we can right size it to match our values. We still spend $13 billion a year on corrections expenditures. We have money to build prisons any chance we want to, but to build affordable housing, we seem to say that there's no money. I think that there is, and we can look critically about that. It's not just about raising revenues. It's about right sizing our current budgets. Okay. And uh, that is Ms. Uh, Dallas Fowler back. Okay, well, let's go to the next question. Uh, and the sixth cycle of regional housing needs allocation, RHNA, was finalized last month. And the numbers have gone up quite significantly. How can your district help meet these numbers? And what do you see as your role in this effort? Let me start with uh, Ms. Candidate Isaac Bryan. Yeah, the numbers have been going up for years. We're not meeting the demand, right? It's over 20,000 units just on the west side. Uh, there's so much more that we have to do in the city of Los Angeles. It's over 455,000 units. Um, part of the reason we're not meeting this demand is because our soft costs are too high, which are discouraging building. We need to build more on public lands where we can bring down those costs and expedite the process. Uh, there's also a lot of uncertainty as a builder when projects get delayed your labor costs also go up each subsequent year that they're delayed we have to expedite some of that process without compromising any of our environmental integrity it's not about skating sequel i know that that is something that comes up pretty regularly we have to protect the environment but we've got to uh, provide all of the incentives and the resources for those who want to develop and build affordable housing to do it uh, in an expeditious way and the state can can incentivize that on a number of, of ways but especially uh, in providing those additional resources. Okay. Uh, candidate Dallas Fowler, the question is, the sixth cycle of regional housing needs allocation, RHNA, was finalized last month, and the numbers have gone up quite significantly. How can your district help meet these numbers, and what do you see as your role in this effort? I'm sorry, Jackie, the first part of the question, you kind of cut out. Now, what, what did you say was... The sixth cycle of the regional housing needs allocation, RHNA, yes. was finalized last month. The numbers have gone up quite significantly. What do you see is your role and how can the district meet these numbers? I think um, it's important. This is why and where um, having folks with construction background and experience um, make the difference. Um, because I am able to look at a construction budget and eyeball uh, fat <laughs> and, and get down to the actual work that needs to happen to develop that housing. But there is a bill, SB 809, um, that talks about um, setting regional goals and allowing um, not just one city to bear the brunt, but allowing a region to be able to meet that quota or need. Um, I'm, it's an interesting bill. 
I'm not saying whether I'm in favor or are against it right now. I have to do a little bit more um, detailed research and homework on it. But I do think that is something that may be feasible for the time. Okay, candidate uh, Samuel Morales. You know, recently I got a mailer saying that um, some of the legislation or laws around building ADUs has been uh, softened and uh, you can build one for $100,000 to $150,000. And in doing some research on that, tens of thousands of dollars of those costs are just in getting the permits. So it comes back to if we want more units, if we need to be able to cut through all of the, the permitting process, the time that it takes, it just goes down to the red tape again and again and again. Not sure what we can do about the cost of land. I think some of us believe um, using public lands is a way to get around uh, the, the market price of land. But if, if it's $100,000 to $150,000 to build an ADU, who's going to do that? No one has that lying around. So it's the permitting process that would, if we could get rid of that, or excuse me, streamline it, not get rid of it, streamline it. I think that would help in us getting more units to, to to accommodate our low-income uh, tenants. Thank you. Candace Cheryl Turner. Yes, well, our, the answer to that is to build more housing. Okay, and so yes, in order to do that, uh, we need to streamline the permitting process, removing the obstacles to building more housing, removing the issue of NIMBYism, um, and that may require education and, uh, you know, Explain to people it's better to have people housed than on the street sleeping in front of your home or your building. And ADUs is another option uh, that we can do to bring in more housing. Um, you know, we have to be able to identify land, and that is the government can provide access to public lands. We, there's talk about use of the military bases um, at, if they're not in use anymore. And uh, the cost of building is an issue. Prevailing wage is an issue. Although I have friends in the unions, prevailing wage always increases the cost of building. And um, well, as I said, we need to just provide more incentives and more concessions to make it affordable uh, and make it worthwhile. Because even if it's an affordable housing, they still have a budget and expenses and developer fees and a whole lot more that goes with it that they have to pay in order to maintain that project. Thank you. Candidate Heather Hutt. Thank you. Um, as your assembly member, I would enforce the law that already exists, that the general plan has a requirement and work with local cities and counties to make sure that they are adhering to what the, uh, what the general plan says. Sometimes, or, or actually for the last 20 years, many cities have ignored it. And so I would enforce the law that exists. Thank you. Uh, as I am moving to the bonus question, you have done quite well tonight in maintaining the schedule. So I'm gonna ask the team, if you will look into the chat and see if there is a question uh, that you can ask. This is your bonus question. And um, you can actually take a little bit longer, but it's actually a yes or no. Um, will you pledge to meet with our coalition in the first 100 days uh, if elected to office? Uh, let me start. Mr. Bryant. How about we go to first 30 days? So no, 30, I got you in 30 days. <laughs> okay. Ms. Fowler. That's an emphatic yes. Um, thank you. And I just want to say I apologize for uh, the time crunch here. Um, and I thank you for your patience uh, with me this evening. Um, I just want to rebut a few things uh, about the prevailing wage. Prevailing wage in California. Which question are you on? Um, Ms. Turner mentioned prevailing wage being uh, as something that is a high cost. Um, and okay, something let, let, that me we, come, let me come back to that. Let's get these questions and then we'll have a little free. Floor. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, uh, Candid Hut. I I want to be a partner. I don't I don't want to question what day you can come and talk to me. I want to be a partner. So hopefully, when I win, you'll be at the party, and we'll be a partner to discuss what needs to happen in the fifty fourth district. So immediately, if not sooner. 
Okay. Mr. Samuel Morales. Well, look, we can't all be experts in all of the issues and you all are the experts. So that's a resounding and emphatic, yes, 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 as soon as possible. Because as I mentioned in my opening statement, my number one issue is low income and affordable housing. So yes, yes, yes. Okay. And the candidate's Cheryl Turner. Absolutely, absolutely. Housing is my area and I would love to be a part of it. Thank you. Team, do you have a question from the chat or shall I give one? We do have a question from the chat. I'm gonna flag one from Ellen Isaacs who's asking mm -hmm. about the injunction that was imposed by a federal judge, David Carter. Uh, so we wanna know what your opinion is of his choice to prioritize temporary housing versus permanent housing with services. Would you support an appeal of his ruling? Okay, let me start with Ms. Turner. All right, so um, I have not read his, uh, the ruling. Um, I'm glad to see that a judge is taking action initiative where instead of sitting behind the bench, he's actually getting out there trying to address the problems. Uh, it's always better to be in permanent housing than temporary housing, but they need to be in temporary housing. Uh, we can't just go on the way we are. So it's my opinion. Candace Samuel Morales. Yeah, I read that uh, article in yesterday's LA Times. So it's, you know, I think everyone can agree that the we need permanent housing. I don't think anyone is, is, is fighting that. But the stopgap measure is to get these people off the streets, defecating and urinating and sleeping on the streets. So temporary housing, uh, it's, if it's a stopgap measure. I hope uh, it, it goes through. I hope no one uh, appeals that. He's, you know, that judge is, is, is trying to get people off the streets. Not, not perfect, but I, I support it. I read that article, I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Candidate Heather Hutt. Honestly, I have not read the ruling and so I don't have an answer yet. I will have to study it and then I would be able to give you an answer. Okay. So can't come off the cuff, sorry. Okay, candidate Dallas Fowler. I am uh, familiar with the ruling and, and I have a high level of gratitude for, for the judge David Carter. I think what the, the message that he was sending to the city of Los Angeles is that they have not done the real work to get black and brown people off of the streets and the level to which uh, his effort is being made um, or this ruling came from. Um, whether or not he's an actual expert on housing, <laughs> that's that's uh, to another degree. But I'll just say, um, yes, of course we need permanent housing. I think someone in the chat is saying we don't need any more units. We cannot make people who own property do something they don't want to do. We have to increase the amount of affordable, low, very low income to low income to moderate income. We have to do the work to increase those units within. And that is going to create a better um, market for competitive, uh, more competitive rates in our market. Also, um, I think what the judge is- I think you're past your minute. Oh, I'm past my minute. Okay, well, thank, thank you. Candidate okay. Ryan. And I'm very familiar with the ruling as it pertains to Skid Row in particular, one of the few uh, black majority areas in, in all of Los Angeles that's left. I think the idea of temporary structures is never the answer. We need we need homes, right? And temporary structures don't get there. I think the judge's attempt of ensuring that Los Angeles provide housing as a human right, that was the heart of the message. But I think what we're, we need to be very mindful of is with a right to housing also comes enforcement when we have those shelters in place. We've seen that in other places and we definitely need house keys and not handcuffs. And so my response is very similar to that of the Los Angeles Community Action Network who's based right there in Skid Row and had an immediate rebuttal uh, to that ruling yesterday. And I would encourage everybody to read it. I, I don't think Pete White knows brothers miss too often when it comes to Skid Row. And that's where I get my, my cues from when it comes to how we address our houses, brothers and sisters down there. Okay. Um, and this is the final question before your closing statement and you'll have one minute each to answer this question. What is the single um, greatest hindrance to producing affordable housing in the 80? 54th Assembly District. One, is one barrier to developing affordable housing in the 54th District. So uh, let me start with you, Mr. Morales. 
Well, there are many issues, as you all know, NIMBYism, the red tape, the cost of land. But if I have to give one answer, I would say it's, it's the bureaucracy. It's the, it's, the, it's the zoning, it's the permitting. It's the red tape at the end of the day. The will is there, people want it. No one wants to see homeless in their neighborhoods, right? We don't want that. But how do we get around it when it, it, it's, it's this red tape and the zoning laws? So that's my answer, it's the red tape. We, we gotta figure that one out. Okay. Ms. Fowler? It is, uh, I, I have to agree with uh, Mr. Morales on this one. It is the permitting and the zoning. Um, that has been the biggest barrier for a number of um, agencies, but I'll also say equity and access to capital. There are a number of smaller nonprofits that want to be able to do this, which is why I support public banking. I also support SB6, which gives rezoning for a number of commercial spaces uh, for very low and low income um, uh, developments, housing. Okay, um, Candid Brian. Yeah, it, it's, it's not just producing more affordable housing, it's the fact that affordable continues to change as wages stay stagnant and cost of living in Los Angeles continues to rise. What somebody said in the chat, what I think they were referring to is there are more vacant units right now than there are people sleeping on the streets. The problem is they're not affordable. They can't be, uh, they can't be purchased by folks. And that's not just a supply side conversation. It also has to do with our wages, with our earnings, with the fact that there are so few who have so much and so many who have nothing at all in Los Angeles. So we have to think intersectionally about this solution. It's not just about building, it's about addressing all the conditions in our community. Okay, uh, Ms. Hunt. The lack of affordable housing is a crisis across the nation. It just is. Like you grow up, you want a, a picket fence, you want a house and it, it's not affordable. Land is the biggest part of that crisis. The cost is the second most. And, and the access to being able to even participate people of color, the access to capital to be able to participate in the growth and development of housing projects. So there are so many elements, but it, it's a crisis. Costs are not effective and the land is not affordable. Thank you. And on behalf of the coalition and the Southern California Association, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Turner, did I miss you? Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> my apologies, okay. Candace Cheryl Turner. <laughs> okay, so the other candidates kind of, you know, hit on it. Um, the permitting, the um, process is very difficult, the nimbyism, I was, and the capital, but also identifying and being able to purchase land is a problem. And that's why often we team up with religious institutions, um, because they have sometimes excess land that we can work with. Okay, thank you. And my apologies. Uh, this is uh, your closing statement and on behalf of the Southern California um, Association of Nonprofit Housing and the coalition that has come together, uh, thank you for offering yourself for public service. Uh, it is something that we wish more people would do, but we're glad that you have. The conversation this evening has helped us to understand that you are passionate about the position that you are knowledgeable about housing uh, and the association and coalition looks forward to working with you in the future uh, to indeed uh, be sure that we are creating the best community. And so we ask you to give a closing statement uh, in a way that we will remember each of you uh, and what you uh, believe we need to take away about the housing crisis in our assembly district. And I will start with you Candidate Cheryl Turner. Yes, again, my name is Cheryl Turner and thank you for inviting us this evening. I'm running to represent the district to make it a better, healthier, safer place to live. I want to address the impact of COVID on housing jobs and the economy. I want to work so that we have more affordable housing for those people who can afford it and hopefully that they can pay for their housing based on one job um, and support themselves. And uh, I want to protect the planet. And um, I want to address our homelessness crisis and criminal justice reform, so many issues. And I want to mostly be accessible, keep an open door policy and work with you to address your most pressing needs. 
and to keep everyone informed. And I hope to have your vote and your support. And my website, www.sherylturnerforassembly.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. And candidate Isaac Bryan. Housing is a human right. It's essential like healthcare and like many other things. We have a responsibility to make sure that that's a reality for folks. But we also do this thing with our issues where we silo them. We talk in housing today, we're gonna to talk environmental justice tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about criminal justice the next day. And the reality is they are all undeniably interconnected. And unless we're talking intersectionally about how failing in one system contributes and exacerbates disparities in another, we're gonna miss the problem. Because when you find a solution in just one silo, but you don't think about how it impacts others, you do damage across the board. And for too long, we've done policy making this way. And it's something that we need to change. We need to usher in a new change in the way that we look at these issues, not individually, but holistically as contributors to our community. We have a real opportunity in California to do something special. We have a budget <laughs> surplus, we have a, a legacy of opportunity, and we have uh, shared values that lead the country. And right now is the time for us to put those values to work with meaningful policy that gets folks off the streets, gets them into a housing, and makes housing that human right that we all declare that it should be. Okay. Candidate Dallas Fowler. I um, was really honored to be requested to attend today and I sincerely apologize for not being fully, fully um, with you all from the beginning. Sometimes we just have a lot of things happening with a campaign. We have all these different interviews going on at the same time, um, but I will say this. My particular set of experiences working in construction, working in financial services, um, working with nonprofits in our community. I'm also the board chair and president of the Museum of African American Art on our, in our district. I'm also serving on the board of Southwest College Foundation working to implement a financial literacy program. There are a number of issues that are impacting and plaguing our community and they all are intertwined. And that is why I support um, a number of issues, but I support implementing financial literacy at the middle school, high school level, because those are the ways to close the wealth gap. That's the way to ensure people have death with dignity, can retire with dignity in the communities that they have served. I'm going to do that work. I've been doing that work. And I believe that my service and knowing where the money resides at the federal level, being a grant panelist, doing the work um, with many members of our state legislature, having the support of our Lieutenant Governor and our state treasurer, Fiona Ma, because they know I am committed to bringing 500,000 thriving wage green jobs to do this work, to ensure that we are fixing our ecology, but also I'm committed to bringing those units of housing, 5,000 units of affordable housing, 1,000 bed dormitories throughout this state but 1,000 bed dormitories for sure in our district for our homeless to make sure that they have a place to store their belongings have um, and be able to sleep and lay their head at night um, in a space that is going to give them the wraparound support services that they need before they move into a permanent housing solution. Um, there's a number of things that have to happen before somebody goes and you give them a key to a permanent house. Um, and I am going to do the work to ensure that that happens. I have funded affordable housing. I think, I think Oh. Your minute. I'm not sure where oh, we're past my minute. You yes. can visit more on, on me at dallasfowler.com. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Candace Samuel Morales. Thank you for hosting us tonight. I think it's clear that we're all very, very passionate about low income and affordable housing. Arguably, it's the number one issue in many of our communities. I see it every day. Uh, just today, my neighbor, today, just hours ago, my neighbor right next door told us he is putting his house on the market. It's a two bedroom, one bath house. It's not even 1300 square feet, small lot, maybe a 3200 square foot lot. He's gonna list it in the high 800,000s. Has one bathroom. Come on now, in West Adams, mid city. Affordability is a huge issue. I think we all agree about that. We all want to see more low income and affordable housing. So uh, there's not a lot of daylight between us on that. So I think you need to decide what issues set us apart. I am a Biden Democrat amongst my colleagues, uh, which is weird to say I'm the most moderate, never thought of myself as a moderate, always thought of myself as a, a lefty Vassar graduate Democrat. 
Um, I am uh, one who supports enhancing Covered California. And I think one of the things that would set me apart uh, from most of my peers, not all of them, is I do not support a single payer healthcare system. So again, I am a proponent of enhancing and supporting Covered California. But when it comes to housing, we're, it seems like we're all in agreement. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you. you very much. Thank okay. you. And the wrap, uh, candidate Heather Hutt. Thank you so much for having me and having an opportunity to talk about, you know, real solutions for uh, a crisis that we're having right here in the 54th district, as well as uh, throughout California. I believe that bringing a redevelopment agencies back into play will be helpful, especially for uh, nonprofit developers. I think it's a tool that we saw utilized in a really great way and getting rid of it was something that I feel like should be temporary as your assembly member, I will bring it back. I know um, what housing insecurities are. I believe that we need to give everyone an opportunity to relieve themselves of that stressor. And um, I wanna be the representative to do that for you. I'm Heather Hutt, I'm asking for your vote, your endorsement. People have their ballots. I'm asking you all, everybody to vote for me. I'm the last one on the list. Put the little dot by head. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you for this forum. Thank you. Uh, to the 170 people who were able to tune in tonight, thank you for being here. Um, you should have received a call from the registrar's office indicating that your ballot is in the mail. If you've not gotten the call, call them uh, to make sure that you're receiving your ballot. Uh, make sure that by May 18th, uh, we have cast the ballot uh, so we can send a very clear signal uh, that this is a district that wants to partner uh, with our elected official. Uh, we thank you for being present and for those who weren't able to be present, uh, the proceedings are being taped and you should be able to go to the SCAMP website to visit again and to hear again uh, the deliberation. Uh, we will also capture uh, some of the comments in the chat section so that you will have those always. We know this will not be the last opportunity we come together to talk about the good of the 54th Assembly District, uh, but to each of you, uh, we say good evening and we will see you somewhere voting. Thank you and good night. <laughs>